Hello friends, welcome to the part 5 series of the engine assembly. In the previous episode you have seen uh, the assembly of the blockhead and the timing chain, timing chain tensioner and everything else. In this episode you will see all the other essential components, uh, small components that are needed to be fitted. Uh, such as you can see here, uh, the timing chain tensioner has a bolt that presses the timing chain tensioner and keeps uh, the timing chain tensioner in tension now you can see this is a small uh, one-way uh, bolt that moves only in one direction when tightened and this uh, applies pressure on the timing chain tensioner here and keeps the timing chain in tension now it fits with two bolt and there is a third bolt on the middle that presses onto uh, the bolt or the lever that presses on the timing chain tensioner. You can see this is uh, where the middle bolt tightens and keeps uh, applies pressure onto the timing chain tensioner to keep it in tension. Now you can see uh, everything is working perfectly and the timing chain everything is rotating perfectly. The oil seal on this side is fitted at the end. Uh, after uh, tightening or after fitting the timing chain and everything inside this is the last oil seal that is to be fitted uh, now this is uh, not the recommended way of uh, fitting an oil seal in an engine but uh, we didn't have any other choices uh, to fit it and we don't know we are actually not experienced in this field of fitting an oil seal so we did whatever we felt uh, was right and we did it uh, out of common sense you can see uh, now he's applying a little bit of uh, silicon sealer on the edge so it's uh, so if there is any leak it will prevent it uh, similarly uh, we have adjusted the valve uh, just by bare hands because we do not have a filler gauge to measure the distance or the gap between the rocker arm and the valve so we have adjusted the valve just by filling uh, the gap as much as we can feel with our finger uh, we have measured it uh, by common sense you can say and just tighten it as much as we can feel it Now by uh, wiggling our fingers back and forth we got the idea of the gap. You can see he is uh, wiggling the rocker arm forward and backward. 
and in this way we just getting the idea of how big the gap is between the valve and the rocker arm and we are trying to adjust it now the most recommended way uh, to adjust the valve is by a filler gauge but here you can see now I'm I'm trying myself uh, to adjust the valve you can see I'm wiggling it forward and backward and tightening it with my finger it feels like something is uh, moving or tapping and when I feel that uh, there is no gap in the middle I just finally tightened it and just hope that it will uh, run ok there you can see a thumbs up but uh, it may look everything is okay but sooner we are going to find out a problem which I'm going to tell you in my later videos you can see he's fitting the starter motor now the starter motor fits very easily it only attaches with uh, two screws both the screws are on the back of the motor after that you can see he is uh, fitting the valve, uh, the valve adjustment covers. there are actually uh, two covers two valve adjustment covers one for the exhaust valve and the other one for the intake valve and you can see he is fixing uh, tightening the uh, exhaust valve uh, exhaust valve adjustment covers Now you can see he's applying silicone sealer on the timing chain adjustment cover. Now this cover has an o-ring already given with it so we don't need a gasket sealer or a gasket uh, with it but still he applied a little bit of gasket sealer in here. You can see a little bit uh, confused in which direction it should be fitted but we saw a picture uh, of the engine that we took before and we found out how it should be fitted and I can see he forgot uh, to put in uh, the gasket and because of that he will open it up again and then he will fit in the gasket and then he will put the cover back on now this is the last piece uh, of the engine that is being fitted after that the only thing left is the CVD cover and the exhaust muffler and nothing else is needed
uh, one thing I forgot to mention that another thing that is uh, left to be fitted which is the connector for the crankcase uh, breather tube now uh, I suppose uh, this is the crankcase with the tube connector because it has a hose uh, connector on the top and it's a one-way valve it can only let uh, air in but not uh, outside so I believe the pressure on the crankcase can uh, come through the tube and get inside from the top but it cannot come out in this direction anyway I suppose this is the crankcase with the tube and there are a lot of other hoses that uh, attaches with it it gets fitted with uh, two screws and we're done now uh, this is the end of uh, part 5 and part 6 will be coming soon I hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe like and share my channel because uh, your subscription always keeps me motivated so stay tuned for more upcoming videos and for part 6 till then have a nice day take care